Hi, it's Rich White, Payless Mining Company. I want to um, start a little series of videos on different sections of the Payless um, that I'm going to call Payless Vignettes. There's going to be 10, 12, 15 videos of just different detailed areas on the modules that I like to explain kind of my thought about what I did and how I went about it, and just some of the minor details maybe that nobody has seen. Um, and this is a startup on this end of the uh, moccasin flat module where the uh, tracks come out of the uh, mining area and into a tunnel over the trestle. Um, again, a real rugged canyon, dramatic. I tried to get as dramatic as I can. I only had 18 inches to work with. Um, so it actually came out pretty good. That section right there is actually only about three inches apart. So you can see that you can really kind of pack a lot in. Um, this section over here on behind the miner's cabin is Cascade Creek and Cascade Falls that runs down and trickles into Caddis Creek. Um, I detailed again. The creek bed out after all the castings were in with sand, rocks, natural rocks, a lot of natural rocks, um, a lot of timber in there that gets snagged up during high water. Um, kind of a popular little mining area here. Got some hobos back in there. There's a uh, animated fire pit right there. This cabin is one of my castings, my log cabin from Rich White Models. Um, go up. The rock work, there's 40 to 45 castings alone just in this specific area. So it took a long time to get the castings in, get them looking right, and pick the right casting for the right spot. Um, I don't just slap on castings anywhere. I try and be real careful where they go so that everything looks natural. Um, go up to the top here. Again, you guys have probably seen this. This section right here is only about 10 inches wide by 14 inches deep. So you can see if you contour your scenery proper that even though it's just a small area, it looks very interesting. Flat doesn't work in these narrow modules, um, unless you're modeling flat terrain. But if you want mountains and hills and stuff, then you gotta really kind of think about the contours, which really add interest to it. Um, drop down here. Again, this is Cascade Creek. A little corner here, a couple of trees, and then up over here. Again, I used a lot of natural rock that I found in different creek beds in the area. Wanted to match, pretty much match the color of your rock work. I choose to model gray granite. Um, this is the other side of the creek. Creek's done with water clear casting resin. Um, I teased the surface of it to make it look like it's running, not rapids, but a running creek. Again, we go up. See some of the rock work. Go around. Oh, Todd, a lot of down timber makes those scenes look more realistic too. And with the core of the stumps and the dead snags, um, it makes a small area have a lot of detail, so, and then we got the tunnel right here. And the trestle goes in. That tunnel was carved out of foam blocks, coated with hydrocal and painted to look smoky for the most part. Um, trestle is all scratch built. Of course, all my track is code 70. Uh, spike down to Kapler ties. Um, you can see where I did some, just kind of goofed around with the top of the casting resin as it was setting up, trying, 
make it look like bubbles and not real rapids, but just moving water. It's okay. It's not great, but it is what it is. It's set now, so there's nothing I can do to it. So, again, this area, 18 inches wide. Um, from right here, the edge of the fascia to the end of the module is about 18 inches. So you can see this is not a real big space. But I tried to make it look big by being as dramatic as I could with my rock work and the tunnel and the curving of the trestle. And I'm pretty happy. I feel like I pulled it off fairly well. Um, again, you guys know about my trees. They're all Caspia on um, balsa wood, hand-carved balsa wood trunks. Um, I like a lot of trees. I think trees really bring the scenes to life. And I perched that cabin up on this little knoll right here. At first, I was going to leave it open, just put a couple trees there, but I thought, eh, I think a cabin would look good. The waterfall is just um, latex caulking that I squeezed out over some wax paper and teased it out so that it looked like it was running, glued it in place, and painted it. And of course it splashes down in there. Not a lot of water going. This is kind of late spring, early summer. So again, natural rock work there. There, a lot of rock, a lot of real rock. So you gotta be careful when you pick them. They, they can look out of scale if you're not careful. So you can find them in any local creek bed if you know, or up in the mountains and they do look better than casting rocks and putting, trying to cast a rock and stick it down there. So those are the abutments for the trestle. See, oh, pretty good, pretty happy with it. So anyway, um, vignette number one. Let me know what you guys think of the vignette series. Um, it's just an idea I had. I was watching Jack Burgess, his unbelievable Yosemite Valley Railroad, and his YouTube videos, and he does a couple lately that he calls details and kind of gave me the idea. So again, um, if it's something that you guys would enjoy seeing, some of the different scenes on the Payless, I'll continue. If not, um, then I'll scrap the idea. But I just thought it might be kind of fun where I can, you know, let you guys know what I've done and kind of my thoughts behind some of the different scenery and just different ideas that I have that I incorporate into my layout. So anyway, that's the end of it. It went a little long on this one. I'll try and shorten them up, but let me know what you guys think and if it was worth getting out there. So, okay. Thanks a lot.